Hartmut in Kennesaw, Georgia. Hey, Hartmut, what's up? Yeah, I, I uh, wanted to speak to the uh, separation of, of, of immigrant children. I myself was an immigrant child. <clears throat> uh, and at three years uh, on, on the ship coming over from, from Germany, as it turns out, uh, I was separated from my parents uh, uh, because uh, uh, for my family, because I had chicken pox, and I was quarantined, and I was three years old. I didn't understand what was happening to me, and it was extremely painful. Uh, it was incredibly painful, but it, nevertheless, it was far less painful than what these children are going through at, at, at our border. And uh, uh, if I just extrapolate or extend uh, my my understanding of what happened to me and how it how it felt to me. Um, and and bring in the uh, the added uh, painful experiences of these children. Uh, um, the, the, I think the, maybe the most important thing here is that they can't speak English. They can't speak to these. They 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 uh, oftentimes can't speak to the, the uh, uh, their caretakers or if you want to call them that, their jailers. Any, in any event, uh, I, I'm convinced that uh, if you factor in the added painful experiences of these children, that this is a clear-cut case of torture, torture for children, a torturing children, weaponizing them for political aims and uh, and torturing them. I, it, it, yeah. I have such a strong visceral uh, um, response to this. It's, it's almost intolerable for me to, to imagine that I'm living in a country where this sort of thing is uh, endorsed by something like 58% of the D Republicans. And uh, uh, I mean, a huge swaths of people. I hear them on your, your program, and I'm just as, as outraged as, as you are by them. Yeah, it's, it's astonishing. And this is now the official election policy of the Republican Party. Uh, Kerry Evald over at Daily Kos is a reason why we have zero photos of little girls in detention. Trump officials want it this way. Uh, the Trump administration has made the clear strategic decision that showing pictures of little girls wailing post separation or perhaps those of young girls trying to soothe smaller ones they don't even know in detention does not play into their all immigrants are future gang members election narrative. Thus, we have seen zero pictures of little girls in detention and also zero pictures of toddlers. All the government released photos have been of little boys peering through chain length cages in which they are jailed and not for lack of trying by, by reporters. Uh, they're, they're, you know, they, can, they can make white, uh, middle class, frightened Americans afraid of little brown boys, but it's much harder to make them afraid of little brown girls or toddlers. Uh, this is a racist election strategy, taking a crime that is the equivalent of running a stop sign or jaywalking and, and elevating it to the point of, of uh, you know, imprisoning people. This, this, is, this is beyond wrong, Hartmut. It's, it's beyond horrifying. Wrong. It's yeah. absolutely horrifying. This, what has this country become uh, thanks to... Well, this is, you know, the billionaires get it that their policies of destroying Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, public infrastructure, blocking, you know, mass transit projects, uh, you know, doing away with food stamps, killing off Obamacare, basically doing away with anything that the government might do for working people, and just maintaining those structures that support big corporations and billionaires, they get it that the majority of Americans will not vote for those policies. And so the politicians that they own have figured out that, and they as well. I mean, this you know, the the Mercer family helped put Trump in office, and and you know, part of the sales pitch was a racist sales pitch. They have figured out that there is this large cohort of white Americans who have fall fall somewhere on the on the spectrum from discomfort with people of other races to outright hatred of people with uh, from other races, or maybe even ignorance of people with other races, being the the least toxic part of that spectrum through discomfort, through hatred. And they are shouting out to these people in ways that are so loud and so indisputable and so, uh, you know, it's just, it's right there. Hartmut, thank you for the call and thank you for sharing your story with us. I really appreciate it. Um, let me just give you an example of, you know, I, I'm saying this is strategic and this is not an accident. Let's step into the Wayback Machine and go back to 19. 1981, the year Ronald Reagan was inaugurated President of the United States, 
Lee Atwater and Paul Manafort ran a, the, a political consulting business that supervised Reagan's Southern strategy, that, that it was Paul Manafort and Lee Atwater who chose Reagan's first public speech to be in, in, in Mississippi, in Philadelphia, Mississippi, the town where three civil rights workers, Schwimmer, Cheney, and Goodman were murdered, and to talk about states' rights. That was the first public speech that Reagan gave as an official candidate of the Republican Party. And Lee Atwater was addressing a group of Republican donors, or excuse me, Republican activists in 1981, and he had something to say that I think you need to hear. Because this is not new, and this is not just Donald Trump. Everybody wants to go, oh, Donald Trump, oh my God, we got a racist as president. Suddenly everything's falling apart. It's not new, and it's not just Donald Trump. This strategy, Paul Manafort has been running this strategy since the Reagan, well, Manafort worked on the, on the Jerry Ford campaign as well. But he's been running this policy of using race and his employee, Lee Atwater, since the 1981 election. And here's Lee Atwater talking about this, and, and it's hard to hear, so I'm going to break in and, and, and uh, moderate it for you. It's only a minute and 12 seconds or a minute and 14 seconds. But let me just share this with you, and I'll play Lee Atwater, and I'll tell you what he said. Here, here's how I would approach that issue as a, as a statistician by political science. Here's, here's how uh, folks like a statistician or political science scientist would look. And he's talking about the changing landscape, political landscape of America. Or, no, as a psychologist, which I'm not, is, is how abstract you handle the race thing. Okay. How abstract you handle the race thing. You get this? Okay. This is Lee Atwater talking about how we're going to talk race, but we're going to do it in a way that nobody can accuse us of talking race. We're going to get abstract about it. He continues. Or, no, as a psychologist, which oh, I'm not, me. is is how abstract you handle the race thing. In other words, you start out and yeah, now y'all aren't quoting me. Now he says, now y'all start out. Now y'all are not going to quote me on this, right? <laughs> okay, here, Lee Atwater. You start out in 1954 by saying. By 1968, you can't say that hurts you. So you start out in 1954 by saying N word, N word, N word. By 1968, you can't say that word anymore because now that hurts you, right? So what's the solution to that problem? By 1968, you can't say that hurts your backfire. So you say stuff like uh, forced busing, states' rights, and all that stuff. So you say stuff like forced busing and states' rights and all that stuff, right? We're getting more abstract here. And you're getting so abstract now, you're talking about cutting taxes and all of these things you're talking about. Are and so, totally so now, now he says, now you're talking about cutting taxes, right? Cutting taxes. And what does cutting taxes have to do with race? Lee Atwater will tell you. And all of these things you're talking about are totally economic things, and the byproduct of them is blacks get hurt worse than whites. And the, they're, they're, all of these things, these abstractions, this, this discussion about cutting taxes, all these are totally economic things, but the bottom line is that blacks get hurt worse than whites when you do these things. And subconsciously, maybe that is part of it. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that if it is getting that abstract and that coded, uh, that, that, we, that we're doing away with the racial problem one way or the other. Uh, you See, if it is getting that abstract, that coded, you're doing away with the racial thing one way or another, right? In other words, you can't be accused of being a racist because we've got this thing so abstract. Yeah, it, it may be hurting black people worse than white people, but, you know, nobody knows that. Uh, you follow me? Because obviously sitting around saying uh, we want to cut taxes, we want to cut this, and we want is much more abstract than, than even the busing thing. Uh, and a hell of a lot more abstract than, you know, so I, any way you look at it, race is coming on the back burner. So yeah, any way you look at it, race goes on the back burner. In other words, we're saying this stuff. We're shouting out to the white races. We're doing this stuff. Amazing.